YouTube family, here is another podcast episode and this is gonna blow your mind. Christina is an incredible coach, just she thinks so differently. So get ready for this episode if you want to change what you think is possible, if you wanna change how you believe, how you think, and really just your reality. Man, I'm just gonna let you jump in because it is incredible, here we go. Everyone, welcome to Feeling Free. Christina, how in the hell are you? I am so happy to be here and so <laughs> in the beautiful energy to chat with you. The beautiful energy. So we were just chatting a little bit and I mentioned a couple of times that we just better hit record because we, we didn't miss because everything's happening perfectly. But I <laughs> wish that we got a couple of these gems, so I'll revisit it. Um, and this is kind of fun because it's almost like people are just like hopping in the conversation. Like it's already, it's already <laughs> hot, you know what I mean? It's like, come on in. The, yeah, it's come on in. Um, so one of the things that you said really, really resonated to me, which was interesting because I still say the word want. And yes, it's semantics and everything. But will you talk about how you view the words want and need and desire? Yes. Um, so I think that for me personally, want has this unconscious definition of lack of separation. I want something I don't have. And I love seeing the world as kind of like there are two energies you can hang out in at any moment. Everything is here or something is missing. So anytime you're in your mind, you're in something is missing. You're thinking about the clients, you're thinking about the money, you're thinking about the house. You're not being here in this moment, which first of all is just insane because it's the only thing that's real and it's happening in front of you. Mm -hmm. But also you're not in the energy of everything is here in the fullness of life now. So unconsciously when you're saying I want this thing um, a lot of our energies have kind of been programmed and wired to to create that lack so you're going into that space where you're not an energetic match to receive things of that frequency um, and I think that's where a lot of people get stuck so I personally noticed that was kind of where I was hanging out in and, and started realizing that I resonated more with desire in a sense of ooh not that I want something that's not here, but I'm tuning into the energy that something is already here vibrationally. And I'm like feeling it, that it's coming closer. So I feel like that's closing the gap. Um, and as I do that, I realize there's no need to want it. I don't have lack around it. I don't fear not getting it. My body yes. is, everything is here. And then the physical reality matches and reveals it and says, ta-da, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's such a big thing is the fear of not getting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. And that's so interesting because you just talked about like the moment is basically all we have and, and to like pry to go deeper into this because this is like, this sounds so fluff and woo and like, Oh, this sounds great. Right. But like, how do you actually like practice it? Like how have you like actually done the thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I sure do. Um, <laughs> you know, and as we were also talking about, like everybody's process is so different. So um, I think a lot of my stress used to come from trying other people's ways and, and realizing mm. like, I don't have any shit with the past. Like I don't have, I don't have any resentments. I don't have any like trauma around it. Like I'm good with what happened. And I think a lot of teachings are about um, healing those perceptions where that for me just didn't resonate because I'm like, my mind is always going to see things the way that it sees things. It has a faulty lens. It's, it's programming. I know exactly mm. how my mind is going to think about everything. I've lived in this mind for 31 years. So what I really practice is more about creating space around my mind and witnessing the thoughts, feeling the energy, holding it, clearing it, releasing it. So I don't unconsciously become it. And then it takes over my thinking and creates my reality. So it doesn't mean that I'm always aligned and it doesn't mean that I'm always in a peaceful or joyful state. Um, it just means that I honor what comes up without making it my reality and I allow it to be there and to see it as illusion um, and kind of let it either take its time to pass through or I consciously release it to kind of come back to my energy where then I am open and aligned with the moment. 
So I don't personally think about things. Uh, the idea of things doesn't really excite me because it's just an idea. It's like mm. thinking about Hawaii isn't fun. Being in Hawaii is fun. So uh, you can we'll say be, that again. What'd you say? <laughs> thinking about thinking, but... thinking about Hawaii isn't fun. Being in Hawaii is fun. And I don't need mm. to wait to be in Hawaii to feel the energy of being in Hawaii. I just need to be in this moment and feel the fullness of life now. So I'm not thinking about what I'm grateful for. I'm actually being grateful in my body and my energy, whether I'm standing in line at the post office or talking to you or spending or receiving money. I'm just in this state of like full aliveness, fully rooted in my body and appreciation for life happening now. Damn, that's so good. Hold on. We got to repeat another part because you said you're not thinking, <laughs> you're not thinking about gratitude. You are being grateful. Yes. Um, so there's an example when I was hanging out with my friend and we were at Erwan and I had just been in this energy of all day of flow. And um, the woman asked if I wanted utensils. And when she gave me the utensils, I felt like she just gave me a billion dollars. I was like, oh, yes, I do want you to thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. My whole body. And I walked out and I said to my friend, that is appreciation, that feeling. Now, if I think about all the things I have to appreciate, it kind of feels like cardboard in comparison because yeah. I'm going in my mind, all of these ideas. So I personally, like I spend time in the morning sometimes to connect with my journal, to get in my energy of appreciation. But, but mostly what I really do is just be appreciative to be alive. Like I'm opening mm, my eyes and cool. I'm feeling the energy of everything that's inside me and around me instead of thinking about the things because then I'm also kind of being in, in lack and I'm also in that like fear space and, and um, dependency on what happens if I'm, you know, feeling so grateful for this. It's like, well, then if the opposite of that comes in, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh no. So I try to beat the game by just being in the, that appreciative energy, whatever is happening. That's so good. Um, when she get, when she asked if you wanted utensils, did you say no, but I desire utensils? <laughs> I was just thinking that, <laughs> that you were going to say something like that. I didn't even have time to, because I just felt like I won the lottery that she uh -huh. reminded me that I would probably love utensils for my food. <laughs> <laughs> would you love utensils? Actually, what I think we should start saying that instead of, do you want, would you, would you love, love utensils? Yeah. That sounds much better. <laughs> Absolutely. That's cool. That's so, that's so interesting. Like I love that idea. It's, it's just another layer deep, right? And so, of course, I don't know, like, because to me, another layer deep, I was just thinking, like, a good step for someone who's never practiced gratitude is maybe just like, a, like, get a gratitude journal, like, list three things you're grateful for. But technically, you could just be like, no matter what it is, no matter what is, I'm in that grateful energy. How do you feel when stuff, how do you practice this when things don't go? quote unquote, your way, or mm. unexpected, or like when you get pissed off, you know, like, what is what does that look like? You know, I think it's different in, in every moment. I had a little meltdown a couple of weeks ago, I could talk about which oh, is not do. my norm. Um, but it was a really, <laughs> it was a really beautiful process, because mm -hmm. my boyfriend jokes that I'm not really human, because most of the time I am here, no matter what happens, because I'm just like, it's happening. If life wants this, I want this too. Um, mm -hmm. Like, yes, yes, this, whatever it is, and, and letting things unfold. Um, but at the same time, I have my human emotions and experiences. So right. I had a funny situation a couple weeks ago. I launched a bundle on my birthday, and I thought that nobody bought it. It was like 2 o'clock, and I had 150-plus people on the wait list, and I didn't see anything come through. And I was feeling all these sensations and emotions. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, you know, being here. And I was like, wow, this is really intense. And I kind of had to let myself go through it um, and feel it and be in my ego and be in my mind and let all that old energy come up that hadn't come up in a long time. Um, and I could see that it wasn't me and that it wasn't real. And I knew it was illusion, but I still needed to kind of have that experience to, to let it out. And the funny thing was that all my friends who were there were so annoyed with me. Is I was like, oh, you guys, my notifications were off. People were buying the bundle all day. <laughs> and, and it was like, I felt better, not because I realized people were buying the bundle, but because I realized, oh shit, that was my mind. Like doing what it does, creating scarcity, mm -hmm. creating limits, creating fear. Um, and so sometimes when it comes in that way, like, I guess I'm learning that you kind of have to let it go with the momentum so you can release it and come back to center. Um, 
which was a really powerful experience and one I needed to have. But most of I the time, I, I think I'm kind of just like feeling whatever's coming up, the energy without making a story about it. So I can keep staying clear as, as openly as possible. Um, mm. But yeah, I don't want to deceive anyone. Like it's not a perfect practice and, and I want to feel the things. I just don't want to stay in them and carry them and recreate them. So I do whatever is necessary in the moment to honor it without, you know, letting it become my, my new perception. That's cool. So you said illusion. So what was the illusion of that moment? Well, first of all, the illusion was that nobody was buying the bundle because goddamn everyone had been buying it all day and I didn't have my Stripe <laughs> notifications on. Yeah. Um, and then it was also an illusion that, I mean, unconsciously, like I didn't know in the moment, but it was like, oh no, I had this expectation I was going to make X amount of money mm. today. And so in my mind, my mind associated me not making that particular amount of money with me not hitting my, what I wanted to make for that month or my business not being what I wanted or holy shit, I quit my job. And I thought I'd all the stories. So um, once I kind of got to the bottom of all those feelings and was like, okay, even if that happened, which in my body and in my mind, it did. My boyfriend's yes. like, no, 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 you cheated. You cheated. It didn't actually happen. I'm like, but I thought it did. Yes. So, so I and got that's to key. that place. Yes. So I got to the place of that's so embarrassing. I'm so, I'm so bummed, whatever it was, 150 people said yes to my birthday party and nobody fucking came. Like that was what I was feeling. Mm, literally. And then what, then when I got to that, again, even though that didn't actually happen, I was like, and here I am, I'm okay. Like I'm at a beautiful house with my friends and my boyfriend and I'm alive and I had a really great breakfast. Like I realized it's like, we're okay. We're still going to make it. We're still going to live. We're still going to keep going. We're still going to keep helping people. Our business is going to keep growing. Like we can't just, we can't just only flow with life when the things we want happen. Otherwise we're not flowing with life. We're identifying with our ego and that's really a small game. So I think I just try to lean into all of that and become curious about what it's revealing to me. Mm. You said, I love this. Be curious about what it's <laughs> revealing to you. Yeah. So what, what did that, re I mean, we might've already touched on it, but to highlight on it, what did that reveal to you? You know, I try not to go into like my life and find examples because then I think you're always just digging and creating Ooh. more identity. Um, we'll so talk about I that then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, what, what it felt like was this really sad, small energy of nobody came to my party. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so I just sat with it and felt what felt it. And like, I cried and I was angry and I was bitchy and I was bitter and I didn't want to have fun at my own goddamn party. And then I was kind of like, okay, all right, I'm here. I might as well enjoy it. And so that was when I realized like, oh my God, you guys, the notifications and the whole thing just was comical how your mind grabs into one idea and makes it a whole thing. So my friend was saying to me, is it true that just because nobody bought by two o'clock that no one's going to buy for the next 10 hours. Yep. And in my vibration, I was like, no one can, no, of course they won't buy. If they haven't bought yet, it's impossible. <laughs> and so I got to see, you know, my mind like front and center, all of it's like ideas and stories of, about how life is. And this is the rule. If nobody buys by this, then nobody does that. And um, it was humbling. It'd been a while since I had my, my ass handed to me by my mind. And I talk about the mind all the time. And I was like, damn, <laughs> now I'm going into some like real human shit that I've been kind of separate from for a while. And I'm really grateful to integrate that. I love that. And one thing that you, I think this is unique about you. Um, I thought you said digging, because right, I'm happy that healing and motivation, all these things are trendy. Like, I'm so happy. <laughs> like, seriously, like when people say, I'm annoyed that like people post these Instagram quotes. I'm like, Hey, that's a great problem. You know, <laughs> is that we have this. However, for you, I like how you said like digging or healing or fixing. Will you talk, you mentioned that a little bit, but almost reliving it. Like, what does that mean? <sighs> I feel like in the beginning of my journey, which was necessary again, there's nothing wrong with anywhere anyone is like, it's all part yes. of your path. Um, and it's so important to know, but from where I stand now, I see that I spent so much time trying to figure out like why I was the way I was, why I was broken, what was wrong with me. And again, it did illuminate a lot of patterns and things. Um, but at the same time, I just 
always was in that mindset that I needed to find things and fix things. And I was like, I'm tripping balls right now because I'm still holding on to something that happened in 2005. Like it, it actually was a big moment for me when I was like, the reason why you feel like you're broken is because you keep thinking about and looking for all the reasons why you're broken instead of <laughs> being in the present moment and witnessing whatever comes up with awareness. Like, ooh, there's something around this or, oh, I have a story about that which I personally think is a much cleaner and simpler way. Um, that way you're not making problems where there aren't problems and you can just meet whatever arises in the moment. Cause I mean, that's all you can ever really do. Um, but otherwise you kind of get like a crazy person. Like you're like, I'm watching YouTube videos all day. I'm reading seven books. I have three coaches. I have two healers. I've done 12 sound baths this month. And it's like, and you're still the same freaking person doing the same shit, living the same life in your little cage because you haven't learned to meet what arises to create space around it. You just become it and look for it and identify with it. So yeah, that's that. Mm. Well, I love that. And I love how you said like, no matter where someone is, it's not wrong, right? Like everyone is where they are. Right. And, yeah. and for you, it's definitely served a purpose. Like it led you to this perspective, you know, definitely. like without that, you wouldn't have that context. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you take clients? How do you, approach that with someone like do you ever talk about like past things or is it just like what is now like the illusions of now the subconscious of now like what do you do I all the things it's, it's an it's annoying answer I just meet it in the moment so I don't really have <laughs> like a <laughs> I don't really have like a way of being people will always be like what am I what are we going to talk about what are we going to learn what's the structure and I'm like I don't know it hasn't happened so I kind of just open up and receive whatever's coming through um, but mostly I just try to hold space and, and gently and lovingly have people see where they're tying themselves in knots. Most of my clients, I think probably because like they're drawn to my energy, not the yeah. specifics of my work. Like they, they just kind of get what it's going to be and they're open to that. So I haven't had many people who have been like, whoa, what's this? This is very different. I want to talk about this incessantly or I want to, you know, they're just kind of energetically, they on some level know what they're getting into. Um, but yeah, I try to be open and and not just do one thing because some people on some days and some moments may need something different than they needed a moment ago. And I just kind of adapt and change and work with that. I mean, the human psyche is fascinating. Like it's it, it can go many places. So I try to kind of be fluid in my sessions and that awareness. That is annoying, but I think that's a really good answer. <laughs> you know, just because it, I mean, it's true. And like for myself, it's, it's cool. And it's like reaffirming to like hear that because that's what works the best, you know, instead of, because if you just focus on like one outcome, right. Or like, this is the syllabus. And then it's like you eliminate and forget, or you're blind to all the other potential possibilities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like beneficial outcomes. What is, what is like a comp? I, I, I'm like not stuck. I am Searching for words? <laughs> That's the word, no, just illusion. The word illusion is like hanging around um, mm. for some reason in my, in my awareness. <laughs> so like what, is, like what is a common illusion that you see? Uh, that there is some other moment that exists besides this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most common mm. one that really messes people up. Oh, um, for sure. M myself also, included. Yeah. Um, and I also think the idea that someone else is responsible for the way that you feel, whew, that's a big one. I mean, that's, that's really like it's some deep programming that I think once people realize that they're putting the meaning and the energetics behind what someone says and, and how they feel about it and in objects too, like money is neutral. It's just a piece of freaking paper. It doesn't exactly. inherently make you feel good. Yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. inherently make you feel good. It's like, if you feel good spending it, then you feel good. If you put your energy to feel good receiving it, you feel good. So it's like giving people their power back to see where they are putting it in other people and things like their illusions of I'd be happy if, or this person just changed, I'd fill in the blank. All of the mental narratives that the mind kind of spews up all over the place it's pretty much just anything all of it illusory Oof, right and so and it goes back to what you said about um just like your birthday party right and like you really did believe that no one bought it 
So you oh, felt, 100%. so you felt as if that had happened. Mm -hmm. And so that's, what's so interesting. And I want like people pay attention, right? Is that like, because she literally believed it, that was your reality. Yeah. And I could not see beyond it. Not, e not even an inch to be a little open. Like, yeah, maybe one person might buy in the next 10 hours. It was like, no, it's done. It's over. Should everybody go home. <laughs> right. And so what, what is like a question or reflection? Like, how do you, cause you said about like curious, but what is the shift? Cause all of us, like myself included, there's something that I'm unaware of and a story and a belief and illusion. So how, what's like the first way to like shift out of that? I think for me, it's, I spend so much time being in my body because I spent all my life being in my head. And I just realized that got me absolutely nowhere except spinning in circles and living the same life. Um, so I spend all my time in my body, like feeling different sensations, feeling mm. energy, being in this moment. So for me, um, and I knew I was going into this illusion, but like I said, I felt like something was calling me into it. Like I needed to have this experience. So I went with it and was like, all right. Um, mm. But normally I'm really sensitive. So when my energy shifts, if I get triggered, if something comes in, that's not me, like I feel it right away. I'm like, Oh, somebody's turned on the air conditioning and I, I bring awareness to it. And I can tell, yeah even if I don't know what the narrative is, that there is a narrative because all of a sudden I was at peace enjoying this moment. And then I'm like, <gasps> so, so I think body awareness is huge, but um, I don't know if you know Byron Katie, but I love her work. And yeah, I, I think her first question about is, is it true? Yeah. And second one, can I absolutely know it's true? Yeah. That those are just groundbreaking questions because you know, if my friend had asked me in that moment, is it true that no one will buy your bundle because they haven't bought it in the four hours you released it? Is it, can you know that it's true that nobody, me being in my ego and my mind probably would have been like, yes, it is true. Nobody will buy it. I'm over and I'm doomed. But the more <laughs> that you play with that and see how the mind likes to latch on to certainty and all these definitions, I think there can be some space. So it really kind of depends where you are and, and what's helpful for you. But I think being in the body is wildly helpful to feel whenever you're constricting so you can open up and notice like what thoughts was I thinking what was I kind of buying with my energy in that moment yeah and we laugh I mean because I do I think it's funny right how you said like the human psyche and just everything um that's how we really do like believe these things like I had a client tell me last week that the his people at work stopped making fun of him behind his back but I'm like how did you know they were making fun that's of you that's what I was gonna ask <laughs> right and so but like he finally realized that it, it was him you know and so the same type of thing is like he truly believed that people were making fun of him behind his back and then he literally believed that they stopped but all that changed <laughs> was his beliefs about him you know that's amazing and so and that it really is amazing like it's fascinating like and like, so that's why I say it's funny because we should be able to laugh at how crazy we are, how delusional we are, but we can change that delusion. Mm -hmm. It's like, technically, like to me, it's like, we're just picking, like we're, we literally choose what we want to believe. Yeah. It, but, and a lot of it is so faulty and flawed and old and, and small. And it's like, is that really what I'm going to create in this moment right now? And I think that awareness is actually what helps you to notice it quicker and sooner and have that comeback rate to be like, I don't have to create this. Like, this is very small. This is my, this whole life is my vacation and my birthday party. Am I really going to choose to believe something that feels really small and is limited? Like, that's just the constraints of your mind. Love that. So when, so an old paradigm, right, is life is hard. You have to work before play, all these things. But you just said life is a vacation and a birthday party. <laughs> Why? Why? I mean, we, first of all, because it like actually is. If we're just, I mean, we all come from different places. I, I have alien friends who know specifics, but I don't know any of that stuff. I just know we all come to earth to grow and have fun. Like it, it, it is a vacation. And I think because... We forget that like when we come here, we're kind of like coming into our little avatar bodies and we're like, yeah, physical human, cool. 
and then time goes on and we forget, right? We forget that we're like playing the game, we're on vacation, it seems so real, we forgot and we're on a ride. But I think once you start to remember, you're like, oh, it's all for fun. I can die at any second. Literally everything that, that's in my world will go away. Like, why am I taking it so seriously? Why am I making it so hard and stressful? And I think for me, um, I've experienced a lot of people in my life dying, like a lot, a lot. And so I'm like, oh, it's very obvious to me that death is real. A lot of people, it's a concept. It's like, yeah, you're going to die one day. I'm like, no, it's like a video game. You're like, you could be next at any second. So I'm like, I think that that lives in my body where I'm able to be in my energy of, it's not so serious here. Like what happens is in, it's, it's, it's just for fun. Like you, and when you can play with form, when you don't need it, you don't have the psychological need to arrive or become or achieve something. It's just fun. Um, everything just becomes so much easier and looser. And you're like, yeah, I want to go to the beach today. It's not like, oh, I don't deserve to go to the beach. I have yes. to. Oh, yeah, all that bullshit that your That's mind me. likes to come up with. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, yeah, like, but I am unlearning mm. all that fun stuff. Good. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I love all that. But anyway, we, the reason, I mean, you and I, like, life is just cool, right? Just so people know is because I think we started DMing a week ago ish i don't know time i'm like it could have been two months ago <laughs> who knows yeah. it isn't now so i don't <laughs> care <laughs> it isn't now i don't want to dig that up anyway um right is like is like creating this space and that's what yes and there were some def definitely some sy synchronicities um so tell people why you followed me then unfollowed me <laughs> oh my god First of all, I unfollowed everybody. I know, My I know. Boyfriend, I just know. having fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I did this once or twice before, maybe. Uh, I I just do it when I need to create space. Like it's been a big theme in my life where I noticed that I can get really like overboarded with all these things to do. I mean, especially being like a one person team, I'm like, I got to build a website, do my clients, do my new course, do a all the things. So I started consciously creating space. Um, I mean, of course, around my thoughts and in my body to feel energies without attaching to them um, in my calendar so I could have time to just do nothing. Um, so inspiration could come through or flow could come through or things I have on my to do list I could pick and choose as opposed to feeling like, holy shit, I have to do 75 things and I don't know where to start. And I think Instagram for me, like I have that tendency to just as most people do to just be on it. And because I'm always in the comments replying to DMs, but then I'm like, why am I looking at this person? I don't even, I'm not connecting to the content. I'm just like, do, 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 do. Or alternatively, my mind will be like, oh my God, she just made her first 100K month. Why aren't you making 100K yet? Mm. So I'm like, I notice those patterns and I'm like, mm, okay, I need to kind of create that space to just be in my own lane and be in my own energy while I'm creating things right now. And it, it comes in waves. And then I'll be like, I'm going to follow these people back. It's just kind of my own personal flow, but I think creating space in every area of my life is like the way I can come into my own natural harmonious energy without all of the mental narratives about who to be and how to get there. I love that. What do you think about the phrase when people say like, be realistic? I don't know what that means because realistic is an identification with your mind. <laughs> I'm not realistic at all. I love that. So... <laughs> Right is like yeah. Said, someone said Christine, like, be realistic. Like, have you always been unrealistic, or have you learned to become more unrealistic? I think I am unrealistic, but my mind is realistic. So I think a lot of it has been about again, like, creating space around those thoughts because it wasn't really realistic for me to think that nobody was going to buy it within the last ten hours. But the mind is very tiny and rigid and predictable. Of course, my mind's going to think that yeah. it's limited. It has its ideas. It's, it's formed already. So I think for me, so much of it is not getting rid of that form, but where's my crystal? Oh yeah. It's like being able to see it like, Oh, mm, okay. Yeah, I know. All right. I'm putting it kind of like back on the shelf there. So I can be in that expansive energy because one of my clients was saying, and I wanted to cry. I was like, yes, I made it. <laughs> you had your breakthrough. She was saying like, 
everything exists beyond your mind. Anything is possible beyond your mind. But when you're identified with your mind, you only know what your mind thinks that it knows based off what it's perceived from your imagined past. So you don't really have access to those experiences and you don't think that you have access to them. So you don't take action towards them either. So it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy that you can't really know what exists beyond your mind unless you're willing to step outside of it, I think. I love, I love that. And that's part of the creating space. Mm -hmm. So what fears or um, doubts or discomfort have you had around when you create this space? definitely my mind has had this idea that like oh well you're just not going to do anything then how is everything gonna <laughs> yeah. happen um but but I think for me I I'm learning how to balance my masculine and feminine energies because I can definitely go way too far in my masculine because I'm like get stuff done love to make things love to do things um but then like we were talking about before it's like it's time to chill out and receive like I've done my work and now I'm like, okay, I put in my request to the universe and now I'm like giving it to the biggest party planner there is. Like, I don't have to call and be Ooh. like, hey, where are the balloons? Hey, is the cake <laughs> coming? Hey, how many flowers are going to be in the bouquet? It's like, it doesn't matter. It's the essence of it. Like you can go play now. So my mind definitely has yeah. that story about like, you're not doing enough, but my energy, I'm like, I know that my energy is the source of everything. If I'm in a line with my energy, I'm good doesn't matter if that means taking a nap or, or going to the beach, like whatever I'm naturally feel called to do is what I do. And that's so good. I love how you said the, the best party planner. How true is that? I, know. I love that. that. That's really fun to think of it that way too. Yeah. Um, so, so like everyone's, and when you say, you know, balancing like the masculine and the feminine, like everything is different, right? So even like with me and you speaking, our definitions and way of life and humanness and beingness is different, like completely different or just in all the different ways. Right. Mm -hmm. So what is your, I guess, overall, um, advice or just the thought, you know, perception outlook on how I think, I mean, I was just going to answer my own question of like, you're <laughs> probably going to say like create space, <laughs> right as like how do we know what works for us like how do we mm. how do we know what's going to work for us because like your level of work and earlier before we started recording you said you know it's like i'm surfing i've already paddled i've paddled out into the ocean now the wave is doing the rest of the work mm -hmm. and i love that so how how do we know what what amount or level of paddling is is our own version of that yeah you know i mean definitely I think it comes back to being in the body and creating space around your thoughts for sure. Because so long as you're identified with your mind, like you think every thought is information and every feeling is intuition and, and really it's just mind. And one of my clients was talking about how confusing it is. Cause she's like, but my mind is telling me this is my intuition. And I'm like, uh-huh, of course it is. Cause your mind is your mind. It knows your language. It's speaking to you. It needs to stay alive. It wants your energy. It's going to say whatever it can for your attention. But once you kind of learn how to witness your thoughts and to feel the sensations and, and pull them apart and yeah, create space around them. And you're like, oh, this thought comes by and I feel this way. This thought comes by and I feel that way. Um, you are less reactive and less susceptible to go into them unconsciously and, and more see them and have that space in your body. So then you kind of naturally find your own energy where you don't have to think about it. It's kind of like, if I say, oh, do you want to get Mexican? You're feeling into the energetic resonance in your own body, using your body as a barometer. You're like, mm, no, but I could do Italian. You're not thinking, you know, pasta, cheese, marinara. Like you're feeling into the energetic resonance you're projecting onto Italian food. So I think that you do it all day long. We just don't realize. Like if you're going shopping for a white sweater, you're not just going to pick up any white sweater. You're going to put it on and be like, oh, this is it. This is it. Right? So it's, it's tuning into the ways that you already do those things and then kind of creating more resonance um, by consciously being in your body to feel like, I feel like writing an email. I feel like doing an Instagram live as opposed to forcing yourself because yes, there is structure in my business. Like, of course um, it's necessary, but I don't live by that. And I don't 
I'm not under the illusion and the impression that that is why my business runs, right? Because without my energy, my business is just an idea. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's getting more comfortable with how you feel in your body and letting that kind of guide you. Man, I love that. So, and I was thinking about this the other day of how do people embrace this energy or I'm curious, and you can probably speak to this because you recently, which actually surprised me, you recently just left, you know, your, like your corporate job when you were already killing the game, you know, on, on, with your business and all that multiple businesses, should I add? <laughs> um, and so how, how did you apply this in like the corporate world? Because for me, right. For you and me, like we can, we choose our schedule. Like today I meditated, I journaled, I had an apple with peanut butter. Yeah. I went outside in the sun, listened to a podcast. Now I'm doing this with you. And then we're going to go to the gym after, you know, and like goes back to like, this is a birthday party. This is a vacation. How, what about people? And with you, it's funny. Like I'm even like watching my words, like, but whatever, I'll just be, I'll just be human. <laughs> right. Of like, they're not there yet. Quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Right. Or they're trying to get there. Like, what does that mean for those people listening? Um, are you saying, are you talking about get there in terms of energetically <laughs> or having their own schedule? Or are you saying how do people apply this if they're like at a job working 40 hours a week or something? Yes. Oh. Kind of, kind of all three, but like really like, okay. yeah, if someone's in a job, right. And it's how do we apply that energy when their oh, yeah. reality isn't that yet? Well, I apply that energy wherever I am because my reality is just a concept in, that exists in time. Reality is right in front of me. So I don't think of my life as an idea of like how, getting somewhere as more as like, who am I in this moment? So something my dad said to me growing up that I really love that is pretty much what I'm saying is like, he said, wherever he went, even if it wasn't the job he wanted to be in, he embodied the feeling of being who he wanted to be in the job that he wanted to be in. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of what I do with energy. I'm like, look, not every moment is sunshine and rainbows and I'm not going to sugarcoat and pretend or bypass like stuff gets real and you have to deal with what comes up internally. And sometimes shit is challenging, but I intend to bring the energy that I want to experience because I think about it like you're always getting whenever you're an energetic match for like you're playing tennis with the universe. You're saying, I feel this way. And the universe is saying, great. And then you're saying, I feel that way. And it's saying, great. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like whatever you bring to the buff to the potluck is what you're going to eat. So I'm like, I am less concerned about what's happening in my physical reality and more concerned with the energy that I'm vibrating that creates change and expansion and, and new circumstances, but also like peace for me. So, I don't think that it's any different being in a corporate job as it is having your own schedule and, and doing whatever you want. I think it's just, how do you want to feel and who do you want to be in this moment? From which energy do you want to meet this moment that opens all of it up? Boom. I love that. Um, the other day I was listening to Abraham Hicks and I heard this quote of stop explaining where you are when where you are isn't where you want to be. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's so good. They talk yeah. about jumping off into more of the same when you do that. You're just making it real. And it's like, yeah. you're not actually there. That's another story. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's, that's another conversation is that we're actually not here. Yeah. Um, like, and it, it definitely, it's funny. Like, I've never realized this before, but how much creating space, like even if, like no matter where you are, right, it's being that energy of who you want to be but it, it is like creating space to figure that out. Like if you don't know who you want to be, it's almost asking yourself like what feeling are you avoiding? Or just like, like you said, creating space in your calendar or have a staycation, but with like no social media or just like whatever that means. Because I think we don't want to know though. I think that's part of it is that we don't want to know. Like we're afraid of space. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that comes up in space, like, especially when I first started creating space in my mind, I realized I was terrified, like my friend would drop me off at home. And then I'd be like, Oh, no, I'm alone with my mind. Like, you don't know what's going to come up. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's a really real thing. Um, but I don't think about it too much as like, who do I want to be as an idea? Because it's like in in the absence of identifying with those thoughts in the creating of space, like, 
who you are naturally, your vibration is just there. It's, it's mm. not an idea of Christina. It's just that subtle energy of like, ah, like it feels so good when I clear my energy and I'm like, mm, I'm here again. Like I'm not a little bit in that, that comment somebody said on Instagram. And I'm not carrying that idea that that client didn't sign. Like, I'm just like, I'm here, I'm eating. <laughs> I'm not seven different places and I don't have that stored energy in my body. I'm just fully here. So yeah, there's definitely a lot that comes up in this space because I think there's that unconscious fear too, that it's like, if I'm not my thoughts and my thoughts aren't actually true and reflective of the world, then like, what the hell is anything, which can be really terrifying. Yeah. Mm. Dang. Yeah. That's, that's super cool. What is, I'm actually, Ooh, this is a good question. We're, this is my question before the last question, depending how, on how you answer this. <laughs> Okay. What is, I've never asked this before, but I know I know you're up for it. What is something that you that you don't want people to know about you? That I don't want people to know about me. Or did not want them, at least. Maybe it's past tense. Hmm. Well, I don't think anybody knows anything about me. They just know their ideas about who they think I am. <laughs> so I don't really think I don't really think about that. Good answer. Everybody, everyone has their own perception of me. Like I've, I think probably in the beginning, I'll answer it a little bit, I guess. To hear <laughs> you. I think probably Thanks. in the beginning, they had some, um, some discomfort around who there are a lot of people who disagree with my work and who misunderstand it from their level of consciousness and who, you know, have their judgments. I've had a lot of people say that they think I'm toxic and abusive and condoning violence and all the things that I'm not. And mm. I, it definitely took me, a couple rounds to to get through that where I was like this is just part of the situation and the experience of of coming forth and bringing this message and sharing it um and I definitely for a while like when things would get really intense sometimes would be like I'm not fucking doing this I don't need to do this y'all I'm already living it like I'm doing this for your benefit um but I think now I I'm just able to see it so clearly that I'm like Oh, if you're just one of those people, like, it's okay. Like have, have your say, think what you want about me, have your ideas about who I am. Um, and I'm more interested in sharing my message for the people who it resonates with than defending and trying to explain to people who are typing in all caps. I think, man, I love that answer. Um, cause I don't think that was, I, no, I just love that answer just because <laughs> that is, I mean, that's the truth of it right of it, it's all like think how many different versions of us are there as many different people as we meet mm -hmm. or don't even meet right just because of social media and all that crap so that so that's so interesting actually right is that that is i think that's just a liberating thing you know is just to realize that like there's so many different versions and i like yeah. that because a, a dude actually sent me a message this morning. So I'm starting to get more and more of that stuff. Welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm happy, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Nowhere else in this moment. I'll, I'll read this out loud. So just for, and like when I, when I read this, this is just because it came up and it's like, um, don't need to explain myself. So here we go. Bro, wanted to shoot you a message. I applaud your heart to help people. I enjoyed some of the things you had to say. I need to unfollow you now, though, because I can't reconcile the unhealthy duplicity I observe between the content you teach and the way it's delivered. Your posts seem to be an ongoing celebration of self, often with few clothes on. If the truth you preach is in, tr is in fact true, you don't understand all the relentless striving in you to be seen. I think the greater we become whole inside, the greater our desire to be understated and anonymous we become. I don't see that. I see a guy with a great body using his body to pander psychology. I can't say for certain this has been your heart. Only you know. If it's the content of what you preach is true, it shouldn't be so dependent on you. I hope you will consider wrestling with what I'm saying. This isn't about your rights or freedoms, but about the messaging messages you send. I wish you the best, brother. Okay. I mean, you know what I love about all of that? Mm -hmm. none of it has anything to do with you nothing that's, that's all why. His, that's 
That's his mind. It's not, I'm, he doesn't even think that way about you. He doesn't even know he doesn't think that way about you. Yes. His mind thinks that way about everything. Yes. And he's just projecting it onto. So it's, it's, right. it's hard to receive it because your body's like, I'm just out here trying to help people. Like, <laughs> ah. yeah. But, but I think the more it happens, the more you'll just be like, Oh, Oh, and this person's story. Interesting. This person thinks this about me. Like, cool. Okay. Yeah, have your delusion. Like, Mm -hmm. it's right powerful. and that's and that's why i felt um compelled to share it which is kind of crazy crazy timing right is that exactly what you said of so for anyone especially like with family with friends even with relationships right of like intimate relationships it's still a story like the version that they have of you is still like it's still like a perception a projection which is yeah that's a whole mind f that we won't get into but <laughs> Oh, but it's, I mean, trust me, I know I had one day where I had 400 people comment all things. I mean, not even like that, like intense. Yep. Oh yeah. And people made videos about me and they posted uh. on their stories and I understood why they misunderstood it, but, but, and I was okay. Like I, I replied back to every single person. Like wow. I don't do that anymore, but I yeah. was just like, and I was very centered and calm, but my body was shaking. Yes. Oh, my body was like, felt like I was getting physically attacked. Um, and I, and I felt a little sad or my mind, my ego, whoever felt a little sad that like, here I am trying to bring light to the world and I'm sharing something that is the deep truth. And these people are telling me I'm a narcissist and I'm evil and I'm sick and I'm fucking people up. And I'm like, what the hell is all of this? But it was a beautiful experience because I was like, yeah, this is what you came here to do. You think you're just going to say these big and bold, wild truths that are here to set people free and, and they aren't going to experience like all of their trauma and their suffering yes. and their illusions coming up and be terrified of what you're saying. Like they're going to be like, hey, my suffering is real. It's not a story. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. And I grew a lot through that. You know, I don't, I mean. I don't have a personal process now. Sometimes I delete them. Sometimes I restrict them. I'm like, I don't need it. Other times I just reply back, like, doesn't resonate. That's okay. You don't have to follow. Like people on the internet are a crazy brew and they think that they have to share their opinion about everything. And it's like, or you could just go hang out with what resonates with you, you know? So it's just kind of part of it. Mm, thank you for sharing that. And because everyone has like a level of that, right? Whether it's, um, and like employees, like your boss at work or your bosses or other employees or friends or family. And so I think it's just really liberating to what you've talked about of, it's like you literally can't control their own illusion, right? Mm -mm. So many stories. Do, mm -hmm. Can I even tell you all the people who have messaged me when I use a filter telling me that I shouldn't be using a filter because <laughs> uh, it's inauthentic? And yeah. I'm like, thanks I've for even sharing. Thought about that. I've thought about Thank that like myself. <laughs> Like, should I be using really? this? Is this an authentic? But then I'm just like, yeah, it looks good. So it's, it's, it's silly too, because like I recently decided, uh, decided I was going to make reels and I had the thought of like, Oh, I reels are kind of silly. And I don't know if it's going to work on my page. And I was like, are you kidding me? You're a comedy writer. You love making silly videos. They light you up. Mm -hmm. But I had this idea of, um, my brand and I was yes. like, my brand is me. If I want to make a silly video to explain yeah. something, great. I can also be deeply spiritual. Like yes. I'm a multidimensional being, mm -hmm. but people with their minds want to put you in a little box. You shouldn't show your body if you're talking about this. It means you're talking yeah. about yourself. Yeah. And it's like, first of all, it doesn't matter even if you were, but second of all, like there's no proof that you are. So it's, it's like, it's just so beautiful to be able to integrate that, that it's like you can be and say and do whatever you want. And it doesn't have to mean anything. Like you're just sharing what comes through and they're just sharing what comes through for them. It's just coming through uh, their filter. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's so interesting and it inspired. I started writing a post, but I'm going to add to it because of this, of how, how many times, like how many times have we said to someone, I love you to the moon and back, or I love you more than the world. But how many times have we said that about us, mm. right? Like self-celebration. And when we like, literally I've said and thought because of what the culture does, right? Is that person loves themselves too much. Isn't that interesting that we idolize and worship others and like completely destroy ourselves. 
it's just another egoic trap. The ego loves <laughs> to create separation. It really does. It's, I mean, in either direction, like I'm better than this person or, or I'm beneath this person. And it's just all illusory, which is why personally like working in Hollywood is an interesting experience for me because I just don't care about any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they're people, man. I've seen them without makeup. You wouldn't even recognize them. Like they're not fancy because they make money. They're not fancy because they're in movies. They shit and die like everybody else. Like, <laughs> but we don't, we have these ideas like mm-hmm. follow this person who's got 500,000 followers and sells vital proteins. And I don't know why she's just <laughs> so pretty and her skin. So like we, we do this to ourselves. <laughs> I love vital proteins, but mm-hmm. it, it's just, we do this to ourselves by creating separation and then unconsciously we compare ourselves or we make ourselves wrong or, and it's just, it's just draining. It's like, I, we're all, we're all the same consciousness in different bodies. Like I, I think the more that we realize that the more it's easy to just be our authentic expression and and not compare and not be in that space and not judge too. Yeah. Well, damn, yo. So, um, (laughs) I could keep, I mean, will you and I will keep conversing. Um, just through the moments of different nows, not in the future, just the, the, the different nows. Um, I don't know what the future is. Um, but last question is, when do you feel like most free? Like, or, and, or what is your definition of freedom? Yeah. When I'm in my own energy, um, when I'm not tied up in my thoughts and, you know, my space is clear, oh, great in space. Uh, I, I don't feel like anybody's energy or there are like thoughts hanging around that are kind of weighing me down or taking up my attention. And that doesn't mean that it, I'm completely empty of thoughts in every moment, but more so that my energy is here regardless. Um, it just fully present in my body, fully here for life happening, driving my car and listening to a song, not thinking about the place I'm going, not thinking about the conversation I just had. You know, I'm just very much in, in the flow. Um, and I think that's just kind of been something I've chosen for myself. I think the most important thing for me in getting to that space is like wanting to be here because it's now and it's real and it's happening. And it's the only thing that is happening. And I don't want to miss it in the idea of some other moment that isn't happening and isn't real. That is an illusion. (laughs) Uh, I love that. That's so cool. Um, Dang, there's one last question I was going to ask because you inspired it. Oh, where can people um, connect with you so they can, you know, discover their own projections of you? Ooh, um, my Instagram handle is. <laughs> That's what I'm going to ask now. <laughs> Christina LaCarrie, K R I S T I N A L I C A R E on Instagram. Boom. Yeah, that's so cool. Like, what is something? I mean, we've, I mean, we've really touched on a lot, like just illusions and creating space. Like that's definitely um, just like the, the juiciness that we had today, but what is something that you for sure, if you died, God forbid you don't, but if you do, it is, I don't know, like, that's the thing. It's like, I'm trying to like make it seem like, like it just is what it is, you know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. but again, whatever. Um, just I'll make a fool of myself but what is something that before you were to go like what is something that you want to make sure not other people knew but you knew uh that earth is just a hologram it's not real it's just play pretend it's not that big of a deal it's not so serious it's just for fun just for funsies just for funsies. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll let you sit on that. Just that your whole existence doesn't matter. And it's, it's invisible. <laughs> it's just vacation. <laughs> no, but really you can take it seriously and have fun at the same time. Right? Like that's what this whole conversation was as like, it's serious and stuff that matters, but also having fun and laughing. It's a birthday party. We can have mm-hmm. some deep stuff. We can eat cake. We can not like the cake we can throw the cake we can hate the cake whatever you want you know and so that's what's super cool about just like being you which is the real you in this moment um so christina like thank you for your heart and just like yeah some really like, gave me some good as i scratched my head some like questions to think about um 
like, thank you for sharing your gifts and just being you in this moment. And definitely the thing I took away was just being more now, which, which of course you hear, but you almost discount because it sounds unrealistic to even do that, (laughs) you know? So thank you. Like, just to like, like, what do I feel? And even just like talking about emotions, because often in this world, we discount emotions. It's not about what you feel, right? It's like, well, what do you think? What is realistic? All the things. Um, so thanks for bringing, I don't even like the most realistically unrealistic <laughs> viewpoint on it. Like for real, it was really cool. Like this is like, this is the dance between the masculine, the feminine, the real, the not real, just like all of what that is and isn't, which is so fun for me, which is just, it blows your mind, but it's, it's fun. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. I had so much fun chatting with you too. <laughs> Woo. all right thank you we appreciate you thanks for watching this video make sure you like subscribe comment and any other youtube things you know the deal you know what to do so thank you so very much for being here and watch one of these videos on the screen Woo woo woo! watch these videos love you so much <laughs>